Hey guys, Dano from Your Guitar Academy and welcome to Unit 2 of our Funk Essentials Level 1 course. And in this unit, we're going to tackle our first full track. Okay, so up to now we've done some funky funks, uh, <laughs> if you like, um, but we've really just done a very specific little loop and we've worked really hard on getting that 16th note strumming nail with our right and left hand. Now we're going to do a full track and it's very much in the kind of the quintessential classic funk. The thing, when you think of funk, the first thing that comes to mind should be James Brown. And that kind of development, that natural progression from the blues music up to the funk. You know, so we're kind of dealing with this one, four, five chord. We're dealing with dominant chords most of the time. Um, and we're doing very much a kind of James Brown style groove first. It's all about the groove. Um, and we're gonna get into really great detail with how to achieve this on the guitar using the tools that we've got. So we're gonna be talking more about the 16th note strumming. We're gonna be diving in a lot more detail with chords and talking very much about how we progress from learning a 12 bar blues and, and everything that's gone into that and what we've learned in the past to now taking that and becoming a funk guitar player. And it's so much fun guys, you're gonna love it. In this lesson, we're gonna start by going through the track, just having a look at the full playthrough as well as learning the very first section. So basically, the fundamental strumming pattern that we're going to be using. So pick up your guitar and let's get started. Hey guys, if you've just joined us here on YouTube for this Funk Essentials quest, then please do go ahead and check out the website. It's all absolutely free. You get the full write-up, you get the tab, the chord diagrams, the scale diagrams, everything you need to get the most out of this course. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to us here on YouTube and leave us a comment. We make sure that we get back to every single one of you. Okay guys, so that's the track that we're gonna be going through. Now, as you can hear, there's loads going on. We've even got a brass section now, which is cool. <laughs> so it's all in there. It's got this kind of James Brown kind of vibe. And the first place I wanna start is by learning the strumming pattern. So of course, there's a lot more going on with the chords here. We're gonna deal with that later. There's a lot more going on with the structure here. We're gonna deal with that later. Let's just get the groove because the groove essentially repeats all the way through it. Okay, so we're gonna start by taking a G9 chord. Okay, so the G9 chord is simply this. Okay, so in the last unit we worked a lot with the E9 chord, exactly the same chord, just now up on the 10th fret where the G root note is, and we bring up the same chord shape. Okay, so G9 chord, great chord, love this chord, and we're gonna get a lot of use out of this chord, especially in this style of funk music, okay? Like I said before, this, this kind of first instance of funk, I guess you'd call it. And, and I always think of, and we always call God, you know, James Brown, the godfather of soul, right? Um, and really we're talking about funk there, funk soul. I'd say that's the first bit of, for me, for my understanding, that's like the first instance where you really get into a totally new genre. And it's based very much on blues. You know, we're very much using a one, four, five. Um, as we would do in a blues, but it's very different at the same time. It's much more based around a continuous groove um, that, and, and the structure can just, it's just blown out the window. You don't have to go to this 12 bar thing. It's just absolutely, whenever you want to change, you change. In fact, whenever James Brown says you change, that's when you change. You could be grooving on this. You could be grooving on that for 10 minutes before he says change. And he's like, change. 
and finally you go to that four chord. So it's, it's a totally different game um, and such fun as well. And we're going to kind of go through that in this. But we need to start with the basics. We need to get this strumming pattern down. So if we take out all of the slides and the chromaticisms and everything else we're going to learn, we're left with something like this. <laughs> Let me just do that again for you. Pow! Crack! Okay, so our loop is essentially two bars and that's the loop, okay? So let's just have a look at bar one. And once again, we're going to bring those strumming patterns onto the screen so you can see these nice and clearly. Um, and what we're dealing with here is, first of all, we've got to learn where to hit the main note. So let's just start with those red arrows. So we've got one E and a, uh, okay? Then we've got two gray arrows. So we will be doing chucka chuckas there. So in that instance, we're going to go two and, okay? So that's our ghost notes. One E and a, uh, two E, okay? Then we get a and, then we're going to do a nothing, and then a three, and then a nothing. Okay, so let's just really break that first bit down. Remember, everything we learned in unit one, we need that right hand consistently strumming. Again, one E and a two E and a three, uh, four. One E and a two E and a three and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four and a one E and a two E and a three and a four E and now without the count. Three, four. Okay. The only other thing to add to that is on the beat four, we're going to do a chuck. Just fits really nicely with the snare. We're just kind of mirroring that snare hit just to fatten that up a little bit. So when you add that in as well, we get this. Two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four. One more time. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Okay. So let's just put that bit with a drum beat. So we're going to go and take it down to 60 BPM. Okay, so I'm going to get 60 BPM, I'm going to get my, my drum beat on. Okay, and we're going to try and do this bit now, okay? Two, three E and a four E and a. Let's just slow that down a bit, because that was, that was quite a jump, wasn't it, from where we were to there. So let's just do that a bit more incrementally. Let's do 50 BPM. Okay, so. And I'll count it. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Okay. So that is the first half. Let me just stop that beat for a second. That's the first half of our strumming pattern, okay guys? So hopefully, again, with any strumming pattern, you, you know how it works now. So you can see the strum, you know how that is read and you're reading it. There's, there's always this bit in between that initial learning of it where you're just going through it very systematically, just skim it kind of a little bit into your head, just kind of working through it. And then you repeat that a few times. It might take a lot of times. And then at some point, this little bit of magic happens where you're like, okay, I think I can hear that now. And 
and suddenly that the sound matches up with your technique and that's when the magic really happens. So there I'm not thinking arrows, I'm not thinking one e anders, I'm thinking of the sound. But because I've trained the technique, it, it, it automatically kind of comes in and I can kind of transfer that kind of sound into what it should actually be on the guitar. So that's, that's a bit of magic that will happen the more you do this process, okay? So we've got the first half of the strumming pattern. Now the second half is exactly the same to start with. So we do this again. Okay, but the difference is we then, it feels like we then stab all the way through three E and a, uh, four E and, okay, like this. Okay, now that'll make more sense when we start moving the chord, but for now that's exactly right. So one E and a three E and a three E and a four E and, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. So each time I'm squeezing that chord on and off, I'm not going, Now there's place for that, that's not a bad thing, but in this instance, that's not what we're trying to achieve. So we get one E and a three E, oh sorry, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Let's try that with a drum beat. Let's just see if we can get that together with the drum beat, that second half. Three E and a four E and a. And that's what it should sound like. Now, before I close those drums off, let's try and piece the two things together. So you've got two, uh, one bar, two bar, they join together, and then we've got the whole groove, okay, which we're gonna loop. So I'm gonna loop this a good few times now to give you a chance to really get this into your, into your soul. Uh, one, two, three, e and a four, e and a. Good. There we have it. That is our first task, guys. Now, just to kind of come on to some of the finer details there, with the right hand, we're kind of, we're going all out in this one, okay? So we're not kind of, it's not like little, little. You know, I, I want you guys, where we're gonna be sitting in the mix, as it were, which basically means within the track, the edited track, or the mixed track, we're gonna be sitting quite low in the mix. So the guitar's gonna be very thin sounding, hence why I've gone for this pickup. So the, the, what we discovered last time, I think is the fourth position, but might also be known as the second position. I can't remember, honestly. Um, but it's basically the kind of the, in between these two pickups, okay? So this position here, that gives you a nice thin sound, okay? And it's gonna sit quite low in the mix, so it's gonna be just kind of just providing that extra layer of groove on top of the bass and the drums. So for that reason, we're gonna be hitting it pretty hard. And notice that when we do hit it that hard, I'm very much avoiding the low E string as much as I can. And I'm also really loosening, that wrist is very loosey-goosey. It's very loose, it's not like this. You know, I've really got to keep that wrist nice and kind of just very loose. Do you know that it's kind of limp almost, limp biscuit, right? So it's just there, it's doing its thing. Um, and it needs to consistently do that. So we kind of, we're stopping the kind of 
full blown arm movement. The arm movement is still there, but we don't need to do quite as much. It's more in the wrist when we're going like this. And that allows us to make good contact with the strings. We can hit it hard but not to the point where it's gonna, it's gonna drag on us. If we, hit, if we have a firm wrist here and we hit it hard, we're gonna actually struggle to kind of get through the strings. If you imagine we're putting a lot of resistance against the strings there. Whereas of course, if that's nice and loose, we are hitting it hard, but we're hitting it at a point where we're kind of, we're going outwards like that. So we're less resistance against those strings rather than just down and hardcore. Um, this is something to experiment with as you go through your funk playing more and more, just, Experiment with that wrist uh, position where you have your arm um, and gradually, gradually you'll kind of refine it on, on your own as, as you go through it. Feel, feel what works for you, essentially. So there we have it. Your first task before the next lesson is to be able to do exactly that. So our strumming pattern. With a drum beat around 50, 60, if you can get it up to 70 and 80 BPM, that's absolutely fantastic. But the speed is not the issue at the moment. The thing is the technique. That right hand needs to stay moving the whole time and you need to be getting that synchronization between the right and the left hand so that when you want this to be dead, you're not squeezing. When you want it to be a ghost note, you're keeping it on but not squeezing. And when you want it to be a sound, you're of course squeezing down on it. So there's so many little layers going into this. It's such a fun task. Um, be kind to yourself, take it easy, and I'll see you next time as we progress this song. All right, that's it for me for this lesson, guys. If you want to head over to the next lesson, all you have to do is click here somewhere. And if you want to start from the beginning of the course, the full playlist is here. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave us a comment. We love hearing from you guys. We love hearing how you're getting on and we'll do our best to get back to every single comment or question that you guys have.